When the era was cancelled in February of 1959, Avro Canada began to lay off its workers. Five of them would form their own company and produce the innovative Avian 2180 gyroplane, a VTOL gyrocopter for the civil market. In March 1959, the new company, called Avian Aircraft Limited, and headed by Peter Payne, set up shop in Georgetown, Ontario. They wanted to build a hybrid aircraft that combined the VTOL performance of a helicopter with the simplicity and safety of a gyrocopter. Their design was based on one the designers had proposed and turned down by Avro in the late 1950s. They knew their design had merit and so began working on a smaller two-seat version. The innovation in this design was a system to spin up the rotor blades before takeoff and to change the pitch of the blades similar to that of a helicopter. The gyroplane included a collective stick to change the rotor pitch from 0 to 4 degrees. This allowed it to take off vertically in so-called hops. Once in a hop, the main fan would provide forward thrust and power to the rotors would be removed as forward airspeed increased. Once traveling at sufficient speed, the rotor would be completely unpowered and the aircraft would act as a pure gyrocopter. The initial design was to use the same system for spinning up the blades as their Avro proposal. They wanted to pipe compressed gases from the engine through the rotor blades to nozzles at the tips. While innovative, calculations during the design phase showed that this system would be ineffective. This motivated the move to a more traditional belt clutch and gearbox setup. The first prototype, registered as CFLKFX, was built around a central steel pipe that connected the rotor blades to the fuselage. The open cockpit frame was made from square steel tubing and filled with fiberglass. A 1.2 meter fixed pitch propeller with a cord of 30 centimeters, which was built in house by Avian, was positioned aft of the central pipe and covered with a ducting shroud. The ducting around the fan increased the thrust and provided directional stability. The rotors and ducted fans spun in opposite directions. This was done to both balance the torque and to accommodate the design of the blades, which were optimized for helicopters. The whole thing was powered by a 160 horsepower, four-cylinder, horizontally opposed Lycoming 0360A engine. The first flight was on a wintry day in early 1960. It was able to get airborne and showed good control and stability. The prototype suffered an accident resulting in the loss of the airframe, but this was not due to a design flaw. A second refined prototype was built to overcome some of the deficiencies in the design. The new prototype, registered as CFMTVX, had many improvements over the original. The tubular steel approach for the airframe was abandoned in favor of an all-aluminum monocoque. The shape as well as the canopy glass were refined. This both strengthened and lightened the aircraft, resulting in a 25% increase in airspeed. The propeller was changed from a fixed pitch to a constant speed and the engine was upgraded to 180 horsepower Lycoming 0360. The first flight was on February 16, 1961. As testing progressed, the fan size was increased from 1.2 meter to 1.5 meter and finally to 1.8 meters. This prototype showed the desired performance. It could confidently hop into the air vertically and had enough power to cruise at close to 200 km per hour. It also had a low stall speed and could fly at 40 km per hour under full control. Avian then built two pre-production prototypes in 1962. The first was the CFNWSX, which was basically the same as the second prototype but had wheel covers. The second, CFJTOX, had a revised cockpit with larger windows, a fuel-injected 200-horsepower Lycoming 0360 engine, and a trailing nose wheel. By 1963, more than 300 flying hours were completed with favorable results. In December 1964, Avian received a $540,000 grant from the Canadian government to take the type through certification. CFJTOX was selected for the certification flights and the arduous process began in early 1965. Although the design was taken from scratch to pre-production in four years, the certification process would take a further four years to complete. Finally, in 1968, the 2180 was certified by the Ministry of Transportation. The first production airframe was built in November of 1956 and would be registered as CFJTXX. This would be later re-registered as N656JT. 
It was almost the same as the JTO, but featured riveted lightweight aluminum alloy frame, larger windows, larger door, and a 200 horsepower Lycoming fuel injected IO360 engine. Although the design had good performance, the ability to hop vertically and land vertically, and an appealing aesthetic, it failed to attract any buyers. The 2180 failed to earn any money for the company and it went under in 1970. In 1972, the assets of the company, including three airframes, went up for sale but there were no buyers. The type certification and one surviving airframe was sold to the American company Pegasus Rotorcraft Limited in 2002. They renamed it the Pegasus 3, but that company too failed to make any sales of the type, and its production future is bleak although still technically possible. The Avian 2180 gyroplane was an innovative hybrid aircraft with some unique performance features. Unfortunately, the design failed to gain any traction with its intended civil utility market, and it faded away from the public imagination.